Hey, welcome back to 65 Drums, my name's Justin. So I recently played the new BT9 E-Flex drum set and saw the refresh of the DDTI trigger interface. But instead of just covering those two things by themselves, let's do a complete overview of D-Drum's entire electronic drum line. They sell a strange collection of electronic drum gear, some of which is worth buying and other stuff that I have a hard time recommending. D-Drum has evolved in weird ways over its 40 years of history, and they're coming up on a turning point that could go in different directions. So let's take a look to see what's here and what's next. That's coming up. But first, today's video is brought to you by eDrumCenter.com. Need a new electronic drum set? How about a new snare drum, a better drum module? Well, eDrum Center's got you covered. They're based in Tennessee with a solid selection of the best brands and a discount code in the description of this video. Use the link to save some money today. Okay, so first up, let's cover the new DDTI trigger interface. Now, if you thought this looked familiar, then you'd be absolutely right. This is a reissue, an update to something that's been around for a minute. It first came out as the Alesis Trigger IO back in 2006. D-Drum makes their version in 2014 and Alesis drops theirs. During the pandemic, it appears there were production problems of some kind, and during the process of bringing it back online, they updated some stuff that really needed to be changed and updated. But before I mention what's different, what even is a trigger interface? Basically, think of this as a drum module without sounds built in. It's just a box with inputs that converts signals from your drums into MIDI for a laptop. That way you can trigger actual good sounds from a plugin on your computer. Every drum module can also do this, by the way, so why even take away features? Basically to lower the price. That's literally the only reason. It's kind of hard to find a drum module for 180 bucks. The feature list is pretty short. 10 inputs, USB MIDI, 5 pin MIDI, and it works with most electronic drums and cymbals that you can throw at it. A very specific kind of device that's not for everybody, but for a couple of scenarios, it may be very useful for some people. But now let's talk about what's actually new. Well, first up, this has more trigger presets with an emphasis on the hi-hat. So this should make your life easier if you found yourself wrestling with the older settings. Next up, this version is natively compatible with the Apple M series of chips. If you bought an Apple computer since 2020, it's probably built on a different architecture than what they used to use with the Intel chips on the old Macs. I was told there are workarounds people have found, but you don't want to have to do that, so this is just more convenient and had to happen. A ton of drummers use MacBooks with electronic drums. You get incredibly low latency with them. I was really surprised at this next one. Apparently, the old DDTI was not capable of getting firmware updates, and the new one can. The final difference is the price tag. The price tag did go up by $10 from $169 to $179. Now, of course, prices are kind of meaningless until you know what the competition is like. So let's cover that really quickly. If you don't like the DDTI, well, there's always the DITI from alternate mode. It's $600 and works with pretty much anything, but it does have a focus on drummers that need something to handle FSR-based electronic drums. Alternate Mode is one of the very few companies that use that kind of sensor, so odds are you don't even need this kind of interface, uh, but it is great for the kind of people that it's targeted towards. The second company is AudioFront. They sell the eDrum in. These are definitely more advanced than the DDTI. The software panel is really slick with a ton of options beyond the scope of this video. Just know it's a great device for power users, but with better features comes a higher price tag. Also, it's out of stock until next year, according to the website. So it's great. I can recommend it as a good option to look at if you want to buy a trigger interface, but it may be overkill for certain people with very simple needs. Okay, so back to the DDTI. Because of that ultra low price tag, the DDTI still seems like a viable option for people shopping for a trigger interface. We need more competition in this space, so I'm glad it's sticking around even though it just has some very minor upgrades. I just wish I could give my thoughts on the actual performance of it. I saw it in person, I asked questions about it, but the company didn't actually have it plugged into anything so I could test it myself. Okay, so next up we've got D-Drum's electronic drum set line, which is evolving. We'll talk about that at the end of the video. The cheapest option is the DD E-Flex for 349. That was released last year, and the soon to be released BT9 E-Flex for 649. The more expensive one is coming out later this fall. These drums are most unique in one way. They come with all the hardware. You get the kick drum pedal, the sticks, and even a drum thrown in the box, which almost never happens, at least in North American markets. As you probably expect, the BT9 has larger components, including a 10 inch kick drum tower, a second crash, and Bluetooth. So on paper, this checks all the boxes, but this is where I've got to keep it real. I can't speak for the cheaper DDE Flex, but I did play the more expensive BT9. I straight up don't like this drum set. Again, it seems like it's a lot of components for a low price, good on paper, but in real life, when you play it in person, it's, you can feel all the corners that they cut. Really bad double triggering on the kick drum, so the built-in settings need some help. If you listen to the ghost notes, you'll hear the pitch go all over the place depending on how hard you're hitting. 
You might say it's an intentional effect, but it happens on multiple kits, and more likely it's a way for them to hide the fact that there's not many samples in the drum set as a whole. The dynamic range between loud and soft is not very good, the sounds are poor quality, and the snare drum has that inner plastic rim that nobody likes. In addition, I don't really know how you'd tune the toms, I don't see any tension rods. Again, these are all little things that show that they had to cut costs in order to give you all that stuff for this low of a price. Now, could you buy this as a MIDI controller for a laptop? Yeah, the weakest part is the module, but if you're not going to use those sounds anyway, then some of the disadvantages of this drum set dry up. Just make sure that if you do this, you got to make sure the kick drum is dialed in, or you're going to get very messy MIDI data, and you're going to have to do manual corrections if you're trying to record beats, for example. The majority of people aren't going to be using a laptop with this. They're going to use the built-in sounds. And again, the sounds are very poor quality, and that's one of the main marks against this. There may be more going on here, but it kind of feels like D-Drum is throwing their name on random Chinese drum sets at this point. The D-Drum DDE Flex is a match for the Aroma TDX-16S with a lower tier kick drum pedal. And the BT-9 E Flex is a match for the Aroma TDX-30S, both a module and cymbals from the factory's new generation that I played right here. D-Drum isn't really trying to hide this. The Aroma booth and the D-Drum booth were right next to each other. You can see the Aroma logo right there on the drum rack of the BT-9. And I don't want to pretend that D-Drum is the only company to use this strategy. The Millennium HD120 is an Aroma TDX15 and a trench coat. Gear for Music, Cap Percussion, Alesis, Millennium, and more all do this. But it feels off when D-Drum does it because they have a legacy of back in the day when they made the best electronic drums that money could buy. And somehow that has evolved into a point where D-Drum is repurposing kits you can buy on AliExpress. In fact, somehow Guitar Center is putting in more effort with their Simmons drum sets than Armadillo is with their D-Drum brand that they actually own. Now, of course, this is all industry nerd trivia that's fun to point out and talk about in a YouTube video. But back in the real world, will parents shopping at a music store really care that D-Drum isn't living up to their legacy? No, it's totally irrelevant information to them. Here's what's going to happen. Parents are going to hit up a local music store. The selection will be sparse. They'll see an E-Flex on the shelf. They'll notice that it comes with the throne, the pedal, and the sticks in the box. The salesman barely has to try, spends two minutes typing it up. They don't have time to read reviews. They're busy people. And boom, they walk out the door with the drum set. These will probably sell. So next up is the D-Drum trigger line. Turns out D-Drum sells more types of clip-on triggers than anybody else out there. So let's start off with the cheap stuff. We've got the D-Drum Red Shots. And I mean cheap. The snare drum trigger is only $19, or $169 for a full set with the case and cable thrown in. It's a single piece of molded metal with a hole for the tension rod, a quarter inch input jack, and a single zone trigger. On the plus side, it is super inexpensive. It triggers fairly well, and if you just need something to mess around and experiment with, this may be the one. But on the downside, this is not a great design. Exposed wires are right there on top. The nut holding the input jack gets loose sometimes. Uh, there's no rim zone for the snare drum, and it's also very possible to break this. I know, because I did. My tom fell over, the metal bent, and a cable snapped in half because of the strain. They're held in place by these tiny zip ties. So if you just want to buy one of these to experiment with and mess around, this could be for you, but don't try to buy this for anything serious. Okay, so next up is the D-Drum Pro line. The name pretty much says it all. It's a D-Drum Red Shot without most of the weaknesses. You've got a full metal housing that would be very difficult to break even if you threw it at a brick wall. There's a locking XLR port with a cable that goes to quarter inch so it will still work with a standard drum module. The snare has a rim piezo so you actually get two zones there. You don't have to position this over a tension rod. It can go anywhere that you need. And this is probably the longest lasting drum trigger line that you can buy. I believe it first released back in 1992. So professionals have been using this for many, many years. The downside is pretty much the price tag. $300 for a complete set, or $59 for just a snare drum trigger, which is triple the price of the Red Shot, or a tad under double the price for a full set. So next up is the D-Drum Chrome Elite line. This is mostly the same as the Pro, with one key difference. The Red Shot and the Pro use a crystallized piezo strip for the head zone, and the Elite uses a circular piezo, and the foam is a little different. I was told that newer modules are more sensitive with circular piezos, and that's why they now sell the Elite line and then the Pro line in case people want that older design. Now is this just a marketing thing, or do they actually have testing data to back all this up? I have no idea, but that's just what I was told at the booth. 
price tag bumps up to $400 for a complete set. And then finally, we get the Vinnie Paul edition. This is exactly the same as the Chrome Elite, except it comes in black and with two kick drum triggers in the box instead of one. So think of this as a metal drummer edition because you have two different bass drums. Price tag goes up to $500 for the full set. So yeah, d -Drum makes very, very good drum triggers. I think the Chrome Elite is right up there with the Roland RT30HR. I own both and I think they perform very well. We'll talk about the new designs that are on the way at the end of the video, but in my opinion, d -Drum is at its best when they're making drum triggers. So next up is the d -Drum Neo Multipad. This is a nine zone sample pad that's positioned as a low cost competitor against the Roland SPDSX, the Yamaha Multi 12, and the Elisa Strike Multipad. It's kind of like the mirror opposite of Roland's red SPDSX. So black shell, red pads, lights on the left of the zones versus having red shell, black pads, and lights on the right of the zones. Here's some quick specs. You get nine zones, two dual zone trigger inputs, two switch pedal inputs, headphone jack, master outs, aux input, MIDI over five pin and USB, you get 30 preset kits, 20 user kits, 608 total sounds, and half a gig of storage. I can't give you a full in-depth review, but I have tested this and here's some quick thoughts about it. Overall, it doesn't seem half bad. The pads have a kind of silicon feel to them and they have a little bit of give. I didn't notice any crosstalk even when I was trying to make it happen by playing on the edges of the zones. The storage size is very small and the screen is kind of weak. You'll see some mixed reviews online depending on where you're looking. But overall, this feels like it could be a cheap way to get a sample pad for home use without breaking the bank. But heavy on the could be though, because it turns out the D-Drum is kind of overcharging for this pad. This isn't a cheap version of a Roland SPDSX. It's actually an expensive version of an Avatar PD705. Yup, D-Drum didn't actually make this one either. There's a million versions of this from different brand names, and they're all pretty much identical. There's the Avatar PD705 for $259. A little bit cheaper, you can get the Locato for $249. Even cheaper, you can buy the Millennium one for $209. Gear for Music used to have one, and you might still see some of those floating around. If you live in Indonesia, you've got the Ashley. If you live in South America, you've got the DB Drums N-Pad. That's actually how I first played this guy three years ago, as a prototype DB Drums end pad. There's a whole bunch of lore on how the sample pad came into existence, which I won't get into here. There's articles and videos online that cover it. All you really need to know is that the specs pretty much match between all the different brands. It's all made by the same factory, which is HXW. So if you're paying over $259, you're probably being charged too much money. Because Amazon is right there. By the way, I do believe there's probably going to be a D-Drum Neo Pro at some point in the future because I was at the HXW Avatar booth and I saw a prototype for their new Pro sample pad. And it follows that all their partners like DB Drums, Millennium, and D-Drum will probably have their own branded versions as well. We'll talk more about this a little bit later on. Okay, so next up is the D-Drum Hybrid line. These are standard Birch acoustic drum shells with acoustic drum heads that also happen to have D-Drum triggers built inside the drums with an XLR connection on the side. Here's one of the sensors that I have in my collection. As you can tell, it's basically the same sensor that you can get for about $7 separately, or you can buy it on the D-Drum Redshot or the D-Drum Pro. Just be aware that it's probably not the Pro because the snare drum doesn't seem to have a rim sensor unless I'm missing something when I was looking at one. You might notice that there's a little red piece above the rim over where the sensor is. That's there for cosmetic purposes. It just points to where the trigger is. You can buy this in a bunch of different shell configurations, and it also comes in satin black or white. Pricing isn't too bad either. So the question is, is it worth buying? If you like the way the drums sound acoustically, then yeah, the triggers are a nice little bonus. Just keep in mind, a set of D-Drum Pros would have the exact same result. This is an acoustic drum set with a nifty side feature. Just don't buy it thinking that it's a cheat code to jumpstart a full conversion project on the cheap, because the math doesn't math when you try to do that. But for people that are buying it for what its name implies that it's for, then yeah, it's actually kind of a cool drum set. Okay, so next up, let's cover the future electronic drums that D-Drum is apparently working on. This first bit of information is from an interview on Digital Drummer. I'll link to the full article below. A couple of quick caveats. This is from a year ago, and the man that's being interviewed is no longer the CEO of the parent company. But I've heard enough outside things to still believe at least some of this stuff is still happening. Evan Rubinson directly mentions that they were three years in development on new triggers. These new triggers would have a brand new transducer, an updated aesthetic design, a quarter inch input jack, and a few small surprises, whatever that means. He also talked about a new module in very vague terms with not much real information. It'll be better than their flagship that came out in 2001. He also mentions that various new products will utilize a cutting edge US developed military technology, whatever that means. He also mentions some sort of update coming in 2023, so I'm guessing maybe in the fall we'll hear something. I'll link to the full article in the description below. 
Okay, so moving on from that, again, I think that we'll be seeing a NeoPro sample pad at some point. Don't know exactly when. This new version of the HXW has a lot more inputs and a nicer overall design. And I'm hoping for more sample import storage because half a gig is not enough. Beyond that, I couldn't actually play it because it wasn't plugged in. And also there was no official spec sheet. And also we got to keep in mind that not all prototypes actually see the light of day, but potentially I feel like this probably could have a Millennium version and also a D drum version and also a DB drums version sometime in the future. Okay, so next up, I was watching other eDrum coverage of the DDrum booth, and I noticed that DDrum mentions that the eFlex was just going to be their entry level tier, and to expect a mid level line to come up next, and then a high end tier some point afterwards. Full credit to Nick's channel, I'll link to the full video below. Okay, so that's DDrum's current electronic drum line, and what they're working on next, allegedly. So, where does that leave the brand as a whole? Well, I think that DDrum is kind of at a crossroads. If they really do come out with some good mid-tier and high-end electronic drums, if they're actually good, this could go a long way to win back fans they left behind in the late 90s and early 2000s. But on the other hand, if it turns out they're just going to rebrand something like an Avatar A71, well, that's not really the direction that we were hoping for. We want to see new things that they actually designed and something that shows that they're actually trying again. I would love to live in a world where D-Drum's back on top making really good electronic drums. Because when that sort of thing happens, every other company has to work harder to keep up, which results in better electronic drums for everybody. So that's the kind of world I want to live in. But we'll just have to sit back and wait and see what happens. Thanks for watching all the way to the end. Really appreciate it. Have an awesome day, and I'll see you in the next one.